Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Pointless Top 10, a show where we make top 10 lists out of pointless things. Why are we flying by this pointless statue in Booty Bay? Because inside pointless things are treasure. Let's begin. 10. Number 10 is Miranda the Hag, and Miranda the Hag is a gnome located on a tree stump at Sorrow Hill in the Western Plaguelands. And Miranda was actually a master illusionist of Lordaeron and Tyrion Fordring's most trusted advisor. She openly dissented the verdict passed by the Order of the Silverhand and was banished for her actions, and she also knew Rexar and Thrall. In fact, she says that she owes Thrall several favors, so I don't know what happened there, but... I mainly remember Miranda because of the Onyxia attunement quest, which is where you actually learn that she knows Rexar, and there's a whole bunch of stuff, but Miranda's such a weird character because she used to be one of the best illusionists in probably all of Azeroth, and then, you know, she knows all these big, powerful characters, and then we haven't seen her again. So the fact that she's an illusionist means, is she still around? She's just disguised? Like, who knows? Maybe she'll show up and help Thrall again with these future expansions and these favors she owes him, or maybe she'll never appear again. But either way, I love how mysterious she is, and that's why Miranda the Hag is number 10. Nine. Number nine is Darkon Drathir, and Darkon Drathir is the high elf that helped Arthas and the Scourge get past the defenses of Kelthalas, betraying his people for power and immortality. Oddly enough, Darkon has one of the highest canonical death rates in World of Warcraft, dying four times, execution by Arthas, vaporization by Anvina, killed with an enchanted arrow by Lorthamar, and then he got killed by us, the adventurers. And there's actually a lot of theories on why he keeps coming back, and it seems like the most common one is that he is part lich or necromancer or something. There's a theory that he tasted some of the sun well before Kel'Thuzad's remains were thrown into the well, and then Kel'Thuzad came out as this lich necromancer, so he got like part of that. I don't know, there's like some crazy stuff, and I don't know if any of it's actually true or not, but he's still a pretty cool character that I don't think a lot of people realize how vital he was to Arthas and the Scourge invading Kel'Thalas. And that's why he's number nine. Eight. Number eight is the great Akazamzarak. I don't know how you say it. Aka Akazamzarak? Akazamzarak. A I can't say it. Uh, he's a goblin magician, <laughs> normally found entertaining people in Dalaran. And he's actually an expert with portals and teleportation and is recruited by the Tyrus Guard to teleport its members inside the Hall of the Guardian. And according to the Warcraft wiki, he was notably capable of opening and maintaining eight separate portals to various locations scattered across three continents, which was a feat unprecedented by a single mage in the game. He also does magic tricks, so he stands in Dalaran and he pulls rabbits out of his hat. He makes flowers appear out of his sleeve. He asks you to pick a card, and then it's like a Hearthstone reference because the guy's like, wow, a golden Dr. Boom. And then he's like, hey, not that card. Give that back. And then he also gets mad and says, hey, how about you help me with a new trick? I just need to find that saw. Or, yeah, sure, keep that up. You might just disappear, bub. And he also has a Futurama reference where he says, screw this. I'm making my own mage order with Hearthstone and suck you by. So overall, he's just a fun, goofy NPC that's also insanely strong with the amount of portals he can create and hold open. So that's why the great Akazam Mrazrak is number eight. Seven. Number seven is Helkular, and I put Helkular on this list because a lot of people know about Helkular's rod, the classic WoW quest, but not a lot of people know about the actual Helkular that that rod is from. So in the current version of the game, Helkular is a forsaken necromancer at the ruins of South Shore, and you can actually find him in the old Hillsbrid foothills in the Caverns of Time dungeon where him and Kel'Thuzad in their human forms are walking around together. And they pretty much have a conversation like it's Star Wars with the Emperor and Darth Vader, and he's just like, what is this necromancy? And he's like, it's not something the Kirin Tor wants you to know. <laughs> and so after all this, Helkular was preparing to transform himself into a lich when a group of humans from South Shore found the cave where he was performing the ritual and murdered him right there. After that, he was buried in the South Shore graveyard, which leads us to the Helkular's Rod. Novice Thyvand, which was one of Helkular's apprentices, tells you to go get Helkular's Rod and begin the process of resurrecting him so he can have his revenge on the people of South Shore that killed him. And so since then, in the Cataclysm, he was trying to find a way to remove the Worgen's immunity to the Curse of Undeath, and then in Legion, he actually led the forces of Azeroth against a bunch of demons. So he's actually doing pretty great. And that's why Helkular... It's number seven. Six. Number six is Zanzel the Outcast, and I'm sure you've seen Zanzel the Outcast plenty of times. He was in Classic WoW, where you had to do Zanzel's Mixture. Uh, he was in Zolgarub, the five-man Zolgarub. But the actual Zanzel is pretty crazy. 
So according to WoWWiki, years ago, the Gurubashi exiled one of their own from Zul'Gurub, a troll by the name of Zanzel. The reasons aren't all that clear, but it had most likely something to do with Zanzel's tendency to administer powerful, behavior-altering drugs to anyone he saw. So yeah, that's that's a pretty good reason. <laughs> he was like, hey, what's up, Zanzel? He's like, hey, man, drink this. And you're like, uh, 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 okay. <laughs> I don't really want to, but he's like, no, 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 dude, just come on. But yeah, his mixtures pretty much turn everybody that drink it into strong but feeble-minded zombies that obey him. Then in Cataclysm, Zanzel attempts to unite the troll tribes of Stranglethorn into an army under his rule. He's then brought back into the Gurubashi tribe by the shade of Jindo to help him restore Zulgarub to its former glory by resurrecting both High Priestess Jekik and High Priestess Vanoxus using his special elixirs. He's then killed in Zulgarub, failing at his attempt to redeem himself. But just think about this. He's an insane alchemist that gets exiled from a bunch of crazy trolls because they're like, this guy's too crazy. And then after a while, he gets brought back in because they're just like, listen, we need you to be crazy and make some crazy alchemy potions. And he's like, yeah, I could do that. Like his actual lore is pretty wild. And that's why Zanzel the Outcast is number six. Five. Number five is Tabitha, and Tabitha is a human quest giver located at Tabitha's farm deep in the quagmire in Dustwallow Marsh. And I actually covered Tabitha in Pointless Top 10 Farmers in World of Warcraft. However, I wanted to bring her back for this Pointless Top 10 because I found her so interesting. So she's this powerful mage that's living with two apprentices right now, but she's been training generations of apprentices at her farm from both Alliance and Horde, though this shouldn't be possible as the humans only arrived in Kalimdor within the last decade. So already it's getting a little suspicious. She's also an alchemist, just to throw that in there, because... I saw one YouTube comment theory on my Pointless Top 10 Farms that said maybe she created this Philosopher's Stone to keep herself youthful and she's not really human. There's also a theory that she was Medivh's mother, Aegwyn. And then there's the mysterious lore about her tiara that you have to get from Zulfarak from Hydromancer Velrotha. So maybe Hydromancer Velrotha used to be one of her apprentices? I have no idea, but I kind of love that. I love when lore keeps its mystery a bit and it allows people to create their own lore. And that's why Tabitha is number five. Four. Number four is Theldurin the Lost, and I picked Theldurin the Lost because this is the dwarf that punched Deathwing. So if you don't know this quest, it's a pretty famous quest from Cataclysm, where this dwarf goes and he finds Deathwing, and then he punches him, and that's that. And everybody, you know, made videos about this. They're like, dude, the dwarf that punched Deathwing, but... I wanted to make this video about the other guys that fought Deathwing as well. So when you do this quest, he's at his camp with his two other friends, and Lucian Tosselwrench says that he shrank the world down to search for Deathwing in the clouds, but then finds Deathwing in the sun, gets sunburned hands getting Deathwing out of the sun, and then launches Deathwing to Kalimdor, which I actually think is better than punching Deathwing. And then there's Martek the Exiled, who says blood was raining from the skies and there's all these fans around. Then he takes one of his fans and his motorcycle to go knife fight Deathwing. But then when he goes to fight Deathwing, Thaldurin shows up and starts punching Deathwing. And he's like, hey, get out of here. It's definitely one of the dumbest, best quests in World of Warcraft. But I just wanted to give some love to the other guys with Thaldurin because I think their stories are also pretty great. So that's why they're number four. Three. Number three is Gunther Arcanus, and Gunther Arcanus to me almost feels like a Tom Bombadil from Lord of the Rings. So Gunther was a student of the Kirin Tor, but he was also a necromancer, even though necromancy was illegal among the Kirin Tor. He also had his Kirin Tor apprentice friends, Bethor Ishard and Thule Ravenclaw. However, during the Third War, Gunther and Bethor were killed by the Plague of Undeath, while Thule willingly sided with the Lich King. The crazy part here is that Gunther actually breaks out of the Lich King's domination on his own. He believed he was the only undead with free will and that all the others were scourge slaves and therefore isolated himself at Gunther's Retreat, where he had his zombie minions attack anyone who approached him. So then fast forward to now and the Forsaken are like, yo, there's this powerful necromatic lich out there. We should recruit him. So Bethor, his old friend, who's now a Forsaken, sends you to go steal his spell book to figure out who this guy is. And then you bring it back and he's like, oh shit. That's Gunther. <laughs> so then Gunther asked the adventure to defeat Scourge Agent Lilith Nefera, I don't know how you say it, to prove that they were also an enemy of the Lich King. So after that, he agrees to join the Forsaken and you bring another gem to Bethor so that he can communicate with his old friend. But it's very likely that this guy was one of the first free-thinking Scourge, which is insane. Like, he just broke out of the Lich King's domination on his own. And that's why Gunther is number three. Two. Number two is Joran Deadeye, and Joran Deadeye is the son of the late Kilrog Deadeye and is the current leader of the Bleeding Hollow Clan. He also ritualistically removed one of his own eyes to see a vision of his death. 
which is pretty badass. And when you talk to him in the Grand, he says, Do you know who we are, stranger? The Magar, survivors. Survivors of a fallen dynasty. Survivors of the Red Pox. Survivors of a shattered world. And something that I learned that I actually forgot about when I was questing back in Burning Crusade is that Joran Deadeye actually goes to Garrosh Hellscream for help, and Garrosh refuses to lend him assistance. I was also kind of curious what class he is, you know, like Thrall's a shaman, but it seems like he's some sort of witch doctor, warlock, shaman or something i don't even know but i wanted to put him on the list because this guy is like one of the most prominent orcs we have around like there's thrall and garrosh and all these guys we've had but like this dude is Kilrog Deadeye's son, and he's still a leader of the Bleeding Hollow Clan. In fact, in Dragonflight, he actually shows up again, and he's like, hey, maybe we'll come back. So I do hope Joran Deadeye comes back, and that's why he's number two. One. And number one is Archmage Arugal. And to me, Arugal was always a guy that was just like, oh, you run SFK, you kill this guy. Like, he was just a boss in a dungeon. But when you read his lore, I think it's so much more interesting, and it actually feels like he should be like, a, a bigger character than what he is. So, Arugal was originally a respected patriot of Gilneas and a royal archmage, and he eventually became a member of the Kirin Tor. However, Dalawar Dawnweaver, a Kirin Tor mage later raised as a Forsaken, considers Aragal to have been a charlatan whose knowledge of spellcasting was so bad he was unworthy to even clean chamber pots in Dalaran. And it was actually true, he was bad at magic, and he even had to enchant items to reinforce his weak magic. After Dalaran was destroyed by the Scourge, he returned home to Gilneas. There, King Greymane wanted Aragal to help him find a way to protect his kingdom. And so Aragal's like, I mean, I know about these weird wargans or something, I could help summon them in from the Emerald Dream and they can protect us. However, they are pretty pretty crazy. But King Greymane was like, listen, we gotta do whatever, just bring him in. And so using Ur's research, who was another Dalaran mage, Arugal summoned Worgen and fought off the undead that made it past the wall until they started killing the people of Gilneas. <laughs> and then they started spreading the Worgen curse all throughout Gilneas, and then we know what happened after that. Eventually, Aragal then starts his own Worgen cult, and he goes crazy and tries to keep the Worgen under his magical control. And then, of course, you go there and you find him, and that is what he's doing. Another cool fact was that Aragal had access to enchantments that allowed his favorite Worgen servants to retain a fair deal of their human intelligence. So after learning all that, I was like, dude, I should have read more about Aragal. This guy's crazy. It's awesome. And that's why he's number one. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching this episode of Pointless Top 10. If you want to watch some more Pointless Top 10s, here's Pointless Top 10 Farmers that I mentioned earlier in the video. Or here's Weirdest NPCs if you want to see some weird NPCs. Also, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and become a patron if you haven't yet on patreon.com slash crendor or become a YouTube channel member and help support the channel. Okay? Okay. See ya.